Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Michael's Church and a special welcome to visitors. Before we begin, just a couple of announcements. And uh, our feast day, that is our patronal feast day for St. Michael is coming up on Friday this week. And the church gives permission for a patronal feast day to um, do the readings on that on, the, on a Sunday, the closest Sunday. This may not be the closest Sunday, but it's, it is close. So if you're following along in a book or a book in the altar, uh, in the pew, or in a missal, we're using different readings tonight. You can see we have this, this statue of St. Michael, the archangel, out. And uh, God willing, tomorrow we're going to have a, <clears throat> a procession into town, into Pliny Park. And uh, so it's an opportunity to raise up and uh, acknowledge our patron saint here, St. Michael the Archangel. So uh, faith comes through hearing, so we'll have to hear the, the readings if you're used to following along in the book. Uh, secondly, I'd like to welcome back to our parish, Father William Sheehan, who is here for a few days. And he's a former pastor and uh, of the Order of Mary Immaculate. So always a blessing to have him back. Welcome back, Father Sheehan. We'll begin in just a moment. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who dispose in marvelous order ministries both angelic and human, graciously grant that our life on earth may be defended by those who watch over us as they minister perpetually to you in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. The surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened, as the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one, 
and was presented before him, he received dominion, glory, and kingship. Nations and peoples of every language serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, strength within me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out. Who accuses him before our God day and night? They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God descending and ascending on the Son of Man. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Feast of St. Michael the Archangel. When our Lord is tempted in the desert, it says that he prevails with the help of an angel. And then later, when our Lord is in the Garden of Gethsemane, in his agony, and the word means battle, it says that an angel comes and comforts him and strengthens him. Well, we might ask, if Jesus is God, and Jesus is all-powerful, if Jesus is the second person of the Holy Trinity, then why does he need angels to help him? And the fact of the matter is, Jesus does not need angels to help him. So the question, why does he have these angels? Why does he humble himself and allow angels to assist him? It's for our benefit, not for his. It's to remind us of the importance and the gift of angels that have been given to us. And I think, even I would have to say uh, myself, we tend to dismiss angels as a myth. It's something for children. And maybe that's because oftentimes we see cherubs, we see the hallmark greeting cards, and we tend to see artwork of angels with children. And it's true that they help children. They also help adults, right? They're given for all of us. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put aside childish things. That's all very true and very important. We have too many people today, especially young men, that are living a continual childhood and a continual adolescence. They never mature. Now, if angels were just for children, we should set them aside. But the fact is, every time you hear about angels in the Bible, matter of fact, I think it's every time. I can't think of an example where they're helping anybody but adults. There may be cases where, like the woman who's having difficulty getting pregnant, her husband Manoah, and the angel comes. But he's helping them. They're adults. Angels are a gift from God to help all of us. And it's good to recall this, especially for our patronal feast day. Michael is mentioned five times in the Bible. 
three in the Old Testament, two in the New. The three in the Old Testament are all from the book of Daniel. I heard a Jewish person say, you know, I pray the St. Michael prayer without hesitation because he appears in the Old Testament. And in the St. Michael prayer, there's no, no reference to Christ. The two references to Michael in the New Testament are in the letter of Jude and the one we just heard a few moments ago from the book of Revelation. In every account of Michael, there is a battle going on. There's strife. There was no such difficulties at any time previously, and Michael appears on the scene. He is involved in this combat between good and evil. And therefore, that is the reason why the church has said that he is invoked in the contest of faith between good and evil. Whereas, say, Raphael, another archangel, we might call upon him because we see him involved in healing when someone is sick. But Michael, as is very clear from our statue, is engaged in battle. We might say mortal combat. And so we say, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Michael is a particular help on that. And it's not just our everyday struggles. Maybe I struggle with someone at work or a student who struggles with someone in school, a bully or something. Our wrestling is not primarily with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness in this world, St. Paul says, spiritual wickedness in high places. The true contest is going on right in here against sin that daily contest of faith. It's called spiritual combat. This is the real drama of life. You remember when the man comes up to Jesus and he says, uh, he has a question about his inheritance, and he says, Lord, help me. Tell my brother to give me my share of the inheritance. And Jesus right away says, you know, no, who, made you, who made me your judge, an arbiter? And then he talks about greed, one of the deadly sins. And so oftentimes we can be involved in what we think are contests. I'm not, my family members aren't giving me my share of the inheritance. What is the deeper thing that needs to be addressed here? It is sin. It's the interior combat. So we have a gift who's been given to us, namely St. Michael, who can help us. I think first thing in the morning, right, is a contest. Oh, I want to sleep in. I can't believe it's 6 o'clock. The, the alarm's going off, and I just want to pull the covers over my head. There's a contest going on there between good and evil. You get up, and as soon as your feet hit the floor, you make the sign of the cross. Maybe call on St. Michael, help me today, Michael, in the contest, because the devil has set all sorts of snares and booby traps. It's a landmine out there, and help me to get through it. That first skirmish of the day, if you can win that battle, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. If you lose that battle, it can often also set the tone for the rest of the day. Maybe it's the internet. I waste time on the internet. Lord, help me. St. Michael, help me to click that X and get out and go do something productive instead of just scrolling through stuff, right? That's a battle. There's a battle of purity. 
St. Michael, help me, especially on the internet. It's getting more and more skilled to, to draw our attention away, especially men, not just men, but all of us, purity and chastity. Help me to win this battle. So many snares, so many deceptions. Maybe it's overeating. Maybe it's compulsive eating. Maybe you have a drinking problem that you need to address. St. Michael, help me in this contest. Or a substance abuse, maybe somebody in your family. So the point is, we've been given a gift. St. Michael has been a gift because he's given to us for a contest, that, that battle between good and evil. You know the, the old Warner Brothers cartoons where there's the, the good uh, angel on the shoulder and there's the demon and they're both whispering. It's, 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 it's maybe a very simplified version, but there's some truth to that. We are being whispered to constantly by the evil one to compromise. It's okay, you know? You can make a pact with evil. And it's St. Michael who is this, uh, th that's why he's often shown as a soldier, you know? You make a decisive blow to sin. You go cold turkey. Don't negotiate with sin. And so we see him plunging the sword into the evil one. And that's how it should be with us with sin, not to listen to those whisperings. You know, we have two images here in the church of putting the serpent to death. One is our Blessed Mother, and it is so beautiful. You look at that statue of Mary holding her child, Jesus. So feminine, so sweet, and yet under her feet is the serpent. She's crushing the head. This woman is involved in combat, but in such a lovely way. That's one way to conquer sin. It is through children, welcoming children into the world, through motherhood, through family, through the domestic church. The devil hates children, right? And so that's one way to do it. It's a, it's, it's a very gentle way. We might say a more feminine way. But there's also the more masculine way, almost a military way. And this is why um, he is shown oftentimes as a soldier. Both ways we should make use of because we can win. We can win the battle, the contest of faith. We're up against a formidable enemy. He is ingenious and he comes up constantly with new snares and, and deceptions. Let's thank the Lord today as we honor our patron saint, this gift who has been given us. And not forget, he's not a myth. He's not just for children. He is a great help to us. And he will help us in that daily battle to win the victory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The goodness and kindness of God our Savior has been given to us. Brothers and sisters, we humbly pour forth to him our prayers, trusting not in our good works, but in his mercy. That all bishops and priests will be true and holy servants of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For leaders of nations and all in authority, that they may serve with virtue, so all may lead a life of peace and tranquility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, and those most in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully departed, that they will share in the fullness of Christ's resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church and grant that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you a sacrifice of praise, O Lord, humbly entreating that as these gifts are borne by the ministry of angels into the presence of your majesty, so you may receive them favorably and make them profitable for our salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, to praise you without end in your angels and archangels for the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight redounds to your own surpassing glory and by their great dignity and splendor you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through your Son, Jesus, the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, gi and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us and recognizing, may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all of your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Christopher, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. We pray especially for Judy Barnes, and there, Lord, in your kingdom, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. the presence of the angels, I will praise you, O oh my God. I will give thanks to you, O oh Lord, with all my heart. I will worship at your holy temple. In the presence of the angels, I will praise you, O oh my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In the presence of the angels, I will praise you, O oh my God.
Having been nourished with heavenly bread, we beseech you humbly, O Lord, that drawing from it new strength, under the faithful protection of your angels, we may advance boldly along the way of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. Our stained glass window series continues this week. And uh, I am actually giving the presentation on St. Michael, which is right down there. So again, our feast day is the 29th. This uh, presentation on the stained glass window on St. Michael will be Wednesday, this Wednesday, starting at 5 p.m. Tomorrow is the procession, and hopefully we'll be able to go down to Pliny Park with our statue be followed by a coffee and ice cream social. Hope you can join us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>